Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you the story of a man who would live as long as he kept talking. Tell you why I shouldn't die. Starring Mr. Richard Widmark. And now with Tell You Why I Shouldn't Die and the performance of Mr. Richard Widmark, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. All right, Nat. Make you a pitch. I got time. Uh, Char- Charlie, it's good to see you, Charlie. How about, how about a drink? Is that the best you can do? You with a big mouth offer me a drink? Haven't you got a pitch to hand out? How you're pure as the driven snow and everybody else is wrong? Oh, come on. Sell me a big order, Nat. Because I got time. Plenty of time. I gotta wait till the cops get here, don't I? To make everything perfect for you. We got lots of time, Nat. Now, listen, Charlie. Oh, that's no routine. Please, Nat, give me the routine. Make me mad. Real mad. Charlie, you're a friend of mine. For friends, I haven't got a routine. You always got a routine, Nat. You're a pitch man. Pitch. All right, Charlie. You've come in here to kill me. You got a gun, you stand there. The gun's pointing at my head. Everything's just dandy. You're going to kill me. And why? Because you claim I broke up you and your girl. I ruined your life. And before you die, you're going to kill me. But you're not sure. You're not sure you got all the facts. You're not sure you didn't get everything twisted up. The fact that you're not shooting ought to be proof that you're willing to listen to a little logic and a little reason, and that's exactly what I'm going to give you. Now, Charlie, I want you to go back a few weeks. Back to that night when you and Eileen were in her dressing room. Sorry to bust in here, kids, but there's a little thing I'd like to take up with Eileen. You don't mind, do you, Charlie? Uh, no, I don't mind. I'll be in the wings, Eileen. Eileen, I just got a couple of tickets to the roulette on 5th. Swell bunch of new acts. Not tonight, Matt. Look, their act leaves in a few nights. You're going to be working. Now, if you don't go tonight, you'll miss it. And show business is your racket. You ought to be up on all the new things that come around. But I promised Charlie we'd maybe go to a movie. Baby, I'm not going to woo you tonight. I'm not out to escort you, man and dame. I'm merely posing a professional problem. Do you or do you not want to catch the greatest new act that ever was put on a stage? Sorry, Nat. Okay, that's the final word. But you know how you wanted to see Elmira Shue and the Four Laughs. Are they playing? Last night, Saturday. <sighs> All right, Nat. I guess it wouldn't hurt this one night. Had a girl. I'll be ready at 7.30. 6.30. We'll snag a meal. 6.30, then. Swell. See you tonight, honey. Now, it's true. I took her out. Just, just a second now, Charlie. Put that gun down for a second. Let me finish. There, that's it. You see, it was a purely professional evening as far as intention is concerned. However, that does not alter the fact that something happens between a man and a woman. I'd be a fool to tell you I didn't feel a great deal of affection for that evening. I did, but it is also true, my friend, that it takes two to make a romance. Eileen came along very nicely. Now, let me ask you something, Charlie. Would you want a girl as your wife who was as susceptible to romantic pressure as Eileen was? Can you honestly and truthfully and with any sincerity say yes to that question? The answer's obvious. Of course not. To continue, after the show, I took her up to her place. We had a drink. She turned down the lights. She turned on the radio. She did, mind you. I just sat there. Then she came over, sat down next to me. I feel guilty, Nat. Guilty as sin. <laughs> Why did you lie to me about that act being at the roulette? What's the difference? You had a good time. Why feel guilty? Well, you know, Charlie, all alone. You love him? I think so. I'm almost sure. I just want a little time, that's all. Eileen, you're kidding yourself. How do you mean? You don't love him. You never could love him. He hasn't got any class. He used to be a fighter. He's got a crease in his schnoz. You're miles above him. He's gentle, he's sweet, he's kind. Look, you talking about a man or a house dog? More than that. 
I never met anybody like Charlie. He worships me. He'll do anything for me. I mean it, Nat. He actually worships me. Unhealthy. I don't know. Look, would you indulge me for a moment strictly for demonstration? Depends what? I'm going to put my arms around you. Like this. Okay, so far so good. Now, if you're the kind of girl I think you are, this is the first time you've had another man's arms around you for a year. Ever since you've been going with Charlie. Don't say anything. Don't want to hear a thing. What now? Kiss me. Nat, you're the greatest pitchman on the island. I beg your pardon. This is strictly demonstration. Kiss me. All right. Now, I, uh, I've been frank with you. I want you to be frank with me. Was that A, better, B, worse, C, similar to Charlie? Don't answer right away. It was better. Oh, Matt. Eileen, you don't want Charlie. No. You want me. Yes. You want me more than anything else in the world. Yes. Eileen, I'm nuts about you. Oh, kiss me. <laughs> Now, Charlie, would you consider me a well-adjusted individual if I went into that apartment and failed to make love to Eileen? Would you believe me if I told you I tipped my hat, said goodnight at the door? Certainly not. Now, I could lie to you, Charlie. I could hand you every story in the book. And what would it get me? A bullet through my head, right? Right. Therefore, you're going to get the truth. After that evening, after we decided we were going to get married... We went to you and informed you as to our plans. Now, could anything have been more on the level, Charlie? Ask yourself that. And then I sent her out. You remember our conversation at that time. I'm going to break your neck. Hold that, hold that, Charlie. Now, you listen to me. Eileen and I are in love. We've been in love for a long time. We're going to get married. You work your spiel on her, you and your fast talk. I'm going to shove that fast talk right down your throat. Charlie, 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 sit down. Have a drink. Calm down. Now, you want to suffer? Living your life with somebody who could never love you? She told me she loved me. She told me she told you she didn't know herself. She was trying to let you down easy, Charlie. Now, it's tough. It's very difficult to accept the news. I know I've had it myself time after time. But, Charlie, a little pain now is a thousand times better than a lot of pain later. Agreed? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to tell you, Charlie, that you almost made a big mistake. That girl is not for you. She never was for you. Eileen is a showgirl. Why, if I told you... Listen to me, Charlie. I happen to be the same kind of no-good type that she is. I am. That's why we go well together. I'm nothing but a Coney Island pitchman. That's all I am, a nothing, a nobody. But you've got something, Charlie. Something called heart. No, Charlie, you're way too good for our kind. I, I can't understand it. I can't understand it. I had it all figured out. You mixed me all up. That is it true, all those things you said about her? Every single word. Charlie, we're too old to lie to each other. We've been friends too long. I never knew. I, I never knew. Now, don't worry, Charlie. The right one will come along. I'll be there to give my blessings. <laughs> all the luck in the world, Charlie. You're a great guy. Much better than we'll ever be. Thanks, Nat. You're all right. We went to Reno to get married, as you know. Now, I could tell you she ran away with somebody else. I could tell you she decided not to go through with it, but nothing of the sort was the case. I left her in Reno. And why? Because I suddenly realized I wasn't really in love with her. You see, the night before, I happened to meet this girl at the bar of the Dorwick in Reno. This other girl was your type, Charlie. And all the time I was with her, I said to myself, you ought to bring this girl back for Charlie. This is the girl for him. Nine thirty. Thanks. Another drink? No, I better get going. At nine thirty? I'm supposed to meet somebody. 
You just got your papers today, right? Yeah. I'm a free woman as of tonight. Then who you're running to meet? Another entangling alliance? What's the point? Out of the frying pan into the fire. Oh, this is just friendship. Mm -hmm. That's how it begins. But you'll be worse than the other one. What about you? Me? <laughs> you don't have to worry about me. Because of that girl you're with? My sister. Oh, sure. That's right. Oh, I really have to get going. Yeah, sure, sure, I understand. Go make a fool of yourself again. Are you busy tomorrow night? What did you have in mind? Nothing spectacular. Just me. 6.30, a ride, dinner, see Nevada. It's a date. So he traveled around. Sure, I knew she had money. I'm no fool, Charlie. But you can't buy affection for money. That's one thing you learn in life. She'd have to have more than money as far as I was concerned. And I was as honest as anybody could be with Eileen. I sent her home to you. To you, Charlie. The fact that she didn't go back to you had nothing whatever to do with what I told her. So believe me, Charlie, when I got back to New York, I was the most surprised man in the world when you came up to my place and gave me that piece of information. Nat, you gotta help me, Nat. Oh, you look terrible. I know. Look, Nat, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I saw her. I, I was like a madman. What happened? I heard she was coming to town, so I waited for her, and I followed her home, and I did it. Did what? I killed her, Nat. I took my gun and I killed Eileen. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Richard Widmark in Tell You Why I Shouldn't Die. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Charlie, when you told me that you'd killed Eileen, all the anger rose up in me. But then when I saw you as you really were, a poor, scared guy who needed help, I pitied you, Charlie, as I pity you now. And even in your desperation, I still pitied you, even though you said things that hurt. Yes, Charlie, hurt deep down here. You made me do it, Nat. I'd never have done it if you hadn't made me do it. Now, that's no way to talk, Charlie. Nat, you've always been my friend. You were the one who told me about her in the first place. You've always been the best friend I had, Nat. You've got to help me. Charlie, you're not going to like what I'm going to tell you to do. I can't give myself up. They'd kill me. They'd try me for murder. Charlie, there's no other choice. There is. A friend of mine owns a boat. Now, now the same friend of mine, he, he told me that you were going with a girl in Reno who had some money. You got some money, Nat. Give me 500. Look, I don't know where you're getting your information, Charlie, but I went out with this girl strictly because I liked her. Money had nothing to do with it. She never gave me one single solitary cent. And besides, do you think I'd allow you to become a fugitive? Do you think my conscience would ever let me alone knowing that I sent you out into a life of hiding? Don't give me a pitch, Nat. All I want is 500. You got a nice apartment. You got a silk dressing gown. Now, don't tell me you ain't got $500. All right, Charlie. Just to show you, I've got nothing but a soft heart. This will put you on... What ship did you say? The Marianne Frederica. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, this will get you on. Five hundred, Charlie. You don't deserve it, you know that. Thanks, Nick. I'm sorry I talked that way. Now get out. You bet, Nick. I'll never forget this. Hello, operator. Would you please be so kind as to get me the police department? Wait, Charlie. Please give a guy the right of explanation. Now, now let's look over the facts. Number one, you killed her. I didn't kill her. The man next door didn't kill her. My, my grandfather didn't kill her. You killed her. So that makes you a murderer. 
I admit very frankly that I did call the police. And why? Because I knew that if you ran away, they'd get you, Charlie. You'd be already convicted. You wouldn't have a chance. So you see what I did, Charlie? I took my life in my hands just to give you a chance at your trial. Taking the chance you'd think I was a double cross. Oh, Charlie. When they sent for me down at the station after you'd been picked up. When I saw you sitting there. Those, those lights on you. Your, your shirt open and the, the sweat and your hair disheveled. When I saw that, Charlie, I cried. You didn't see that, did you? Oh, I did, Charlie. Tears were running down my face. And ordinarily, I'm not known as a sentimental man. Recognize him? Yes. Charlie, it's me. Nat. You turned me in. What'd you turn me in for? Charlie, Charlie. Does he have an attorney? You'll have to ask him. Lieutenant, could I talk to you alone? Sure. Come on out here. Lieutenant, I've got a young lady waiting for me, so I've got to rush. That is, if you don't need me anymore. Well, just a few questions. Sure thing. But uh, before you begin, could I make a small statement? It may be repeated in court. That's just what I want. Well, I went with Eileen for a long time. Took her to Reno. We were going to get married. And she came back here when we decided not to go through with it. I was going with this other girl, Barbara. We're in love. I had nothing whatever to do with the crime. All right. What was Charlie to Eileen? He was in love with her. He came to my apartment tonight, told me he'd killed her. He asked me for money to get aboard a boat. I gave it to him to save my own life. I saw he was desperate. Then I called you. That'd be all? That'd be all for Charlie. You see, I told him the absolute truth. I'm that kind of a guy, Charlie. Now, if you want to kill a man for telling the truth, that's perfectly all right with me. But before you pull any triggers, try to remember my testimony in court. That was the truth, too. You remember, Charlie, I tried my best for you. Mr. Driscoll, will you tell the court what your relationship was with Miss Eileen Bishop? I certainly will be more than happy to. It was love. I loved her, she loved me. It was that simple. But uh, things like that break up. You made love to her when she was engaged to the defendant? She made love to me. But you acceded to her advances. Mr. Bjornson, Eileen was a very lovely girl. But if for one moment I had even one inkling that she loved Charlie, uh, the defendant, never for a moment would I have considered forcing myself into such a relationship. <clears throat> Mr. Driscoll, you're a salesman, aren't you? A pitchman. I sell gadgets at Coney Island. You're a pretty fast talker, aren't you? I applied my profession since I was a boy. My father was a pitchman. Did you ever sell the defendant anything? No, sir. I don't sell merchandise to friends. On the contrary, Mr. Driscoll. You sold the defendant the biggest bill of goods of your life. That will be all. When they sentenced you to life imprisonment, I smiled. Yes, Charlie, I was happy. I was happy because I felt maybe I had something to do with the leniency of the court. Maybe because the jury thought I'd prodded you into a murder... Which, of course, was totally untrue, as you know. Maybe by being a villain, I'd made things a little better for you. And then what do you do? Instead of making things easy for yourself, instead of being thankful for your good luck, you negotiate a break and boom, you're out of jail. Charlie, when I heard about that jailbreak, my heart hit the bottom of my stomach. I can't tell you how I felt. I thought you'd gone crazy. Well, you had. What are you going to do, Nat? I, I got to get out of town, Barbara. He'll be after me first thing. He knows he'll never get away with it. He wants only one thing to get me. I can call for reservations. We can leave on the next plane. Yeah, yeah, that's the best thing to do. Get out of here till I get him again. I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you, Nat. Oh, you're wonderful, honey. You get packed. I'll phone for the tickets. No, no, I got a better idea. Car. We'll be free to go places. Whatever you say, Nat. Please, let's hurry. Hi, 
I was hoping so hard for you, Charlie. You'll never know. Because killing me would guarantee your death, Charlie. And I felt bad enough about the whole thing, let alone have my death be the cause of yours. What is revenge? A moment, and then the suffering begins. So Barbara and I left for the South. We got as far as South Carolina near Charleston when Barbara told me the news. <laughs> Just heard it on the radio, Nat. They got him. They did? In New York City. Just picked him up. Oh. Darling, we're safe. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's a big relief. I was really scared there for a while. Yeah. It's all over now, honey. Yeah. We can go back home. That's right. It's all over. Come on, let's get out of this hole. Feels good to be back, huh? Mm, feels wonderful. Come here. Mm. Oh, baby, what would I do with that? Mm. Mm. Let it ring. Mm. Might be important. No more. Yeah? Nat? Oh, yes. Yes, Lieutenant. Well, I got a promotion. The last time it was Sergeant. Is the same one that was there last time there this time? Well, I'm glad you got him, Lieutenant. That's just it, baby. I was just wondering if you were still in town. No, no, I'm back now that everything's all right again. I don't know what you mean, baby doll, honey, sweetheart. If I was really the lieutenant, I'd tell you that Charlie is still on the loose and liable to show up at your place any minute. What? That's right. You better pack up or they'll be packing you up. Bye, sweetheart. So long, Lieutenant, and thanks for the information. All right. What's a big idea? What? He's loose. He's still loose. What's a big idea? No. Stay away from me. You want to get me killed, don't you? Sure he's loose. He's loose and he's going to get you, Nat. Right here. It's a sweet trick getting me back to town, back to the apartment. How many other lieutenants have you talked to lately? That was Lieutenant Stop it. Stop it. I could hear a voice cracking all the way over here. For once, you're not going to talk yourself out of anything, Nat. Charlie's going to be here soon. I'm going to call the police. Too late, Nat. You left town. The police didn't have anything to protect you. were gone. This place was empty, remember? What? Go on, Nat. Talk. Talk loud and fast. You're going to need every word. I'm getting out of here. You're going to wait here till he comes. Get out of my way. Nat! I never knew I could hate anybody as much as I hate you. Smooth, fast talk. Shut up! You broke me, Nat. Like you broke Eileen, like you broke Charlie, like you broke everybody you ever met. Get out of my He's way. He's coming up the stairs. Hear him, Nat? Get out of my way. Talk, talk, talk yourself out the back way. Go on, Nat, talk. What, Ch Charlie. Get out, lady, get out of here. Oh. You didn't get out of town like I expected, Nat. You just sat up here waiting. All right. Make your pitch. I got time. So there are your reasons, Charlie. You see, I've, I've, I've told you the truth to the best of my ability. So you see, that's the case I present to you for your inspection. Listen. Listen, they're outside. The police, they're here. Okay. Shoot me and get the chair. Or else here's my offer, Charlie. Come with me and I'll help you get away. I've never stopped being your friend, Charlie, despite how you might have felt about me. I've got some money, too. Not much, but some. And, and, and I'm sure, Charlie, with my connections, we could get you out of the country. I've never lost faith in you, Charlie. And even now, during your present difficulties, I still haven't lost faith. That's friendship, Charlie. That's what I offer you. Not to save my life, but to save yours. Because, Charlie, you can shoot me down dead. Right now, blow my head off. But I'll die loving you, Charlie. Loving you with my dying breath. You're through, pitch man? Yes, Charlie. I'm through. No dice. Uh. <laughs> 
Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Richard Widmark. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Tell You Why I Shouldn't Die was written for Suspense by David Ellis. In tonight's play, High Everback was heard as Charlie, Kathy Lewis as Barbara, and Joy Terry as Eileen. Featured in the cast were Larry Thor, Joseph Kearns, and Mary Ship. Our thanks to 20th Century Fox Studios, who made possible Richard Widmark's appearance tonight. Watch for Mr. Widmark in that studio's forthcoming production, The Frogmen. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Gregory Peck, in a tale we call The Truth About Jerry Baxter. You can buy Autolite Staple batteries, Autolite standard or resistor type spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Today, many physically handicapped persons are performing important jobs in almost all fields. If you're an employer, why not check with your state employment service? Perhaps your employment problems can be solved by physically handicapped but skilled and capable workers. This is the CBS Radio Network.